uh, I would say that FreeWRL has a kind of a long history and uh, we try to keep going with it. Uh, it's a, a desktop application that runs on Linux and Windows, uh, a little bit on OS X. It has run on uh, other Unixy, Linuxy things before, uh, including uh, Android and iOS and Playbook. Uh, right now it's maintained primarily on Windows and uh, we do uh, regularly uh, check the Linux version. It's being distributed in Linux uh, and it um, gets about uh, 7,000 uh, downloads a year of the Windows binaries. So it's not quite done its um, its history yet, but it's getting near the end of life. Uh, written in uh, primarily in C, about a half a million lines of uh, C and dot uh, H code. And let me see if I can show you something we we've done recently. Maybe I'll I'll show you the extras. This is a type of navigation that uh, Google Earth and Cesium use. There is a, uh, what I call a pinpoint that stays underneath the uh, cursor for panning. And uh, uh, it, um, Uh, it's a little more convenient for uh, working with large scenes. Uh, here it's using the mouse wheel to uh, go directly to something. You put the, the uh, cursor over something you want to uh, pan to. And then you use the mouse wheel to pan in. To zoom in. Uh, let me show you tiles. Tiles is something I've seen in uh, in in uh, there is a, a cesium 3D tiles used for geospatial data, and it uses a couple of um, techniques. Uh, frustum culling. Uh, it loads the the extent of each tile uh, in the kind of the main scene uh, to kind of introduce each tile and its extent so that uh, when you do frustum culling it knows which tiles to load and the tiles are loaded with a URL and in the case that I the way I implemented the tiles in in X3D I used an inline to represent a URL and then uh, from my tile node I could uh, From a tile node, I could uh, route to the inline to say when to load or unload, and the tile would know to uh, load or unload based on the extent of the bounding box. 
uh, H and M motion clip. And uh, this was an extra thing that's not in the specs that uh, I load a .bvh animation file that uh, animates an H and M character. Uh, that's uh, about all uh, the extra apologies. things. Hello? Apologies to interrupt. Would you mind putting that on the screen again? That was really great. Hoping to capture a screenshot. Thank you. Uh, when it comes to uh, version four of the specs, uh, we made some progress on various things. Uh, if I could figure out how to share some of this, I could show you what what we can do. How do I get back to sharing? If I want to share a different window, how do I do that? Yes, um, so you'll see the uh, green area. If you stop sharing and then share again, you'll have to pick the other window at that first step. Green area. I see green. I see a green border, but I don't see a green area. It'll be um, a little bar that says you're sharing your screen. Um, it might be under. Oh, a I see or, it. Yeah, yeah. Got so you. It's at the top. Yeah, if you stop. You share. And then That's you it. Pick the right window that you want. Perfect. Okay. Can you see a scene? And yes. I'm kind of rotating something. All right. This is the um, physics based rendering and unlit materials and regular materials, and I'm showing how we can have a different material on each side. Uh, so uh, this is kind of proof that you can do it all. You can have your physics-based, your unlit, your regular materials with uh, uh, texture extensions and transparency textures uh, all in uh, one scene. All right, let's get out of that. I would like to show the projective texture mapping. So let's give that a try.
this is a case of I've got some um, parallel semi-transparent planes stacked up and I've got a uh, texture projector and it's projecting a texture and each time it hits a plane uh, the, pl the uh, plane gets that texture that I'm projecting on. And this is a so-called parallel uh, projective texture map. And this is an example of uh, sharing eight textures, uh, projecting eight textures into a scene and hitting various objects in the scene. And this is an example of a uh, texture being projected into uh, various uh, geometries. And you can see it's got, how do you say, the backside culling applied. Uh, here is uh, point properties and you can see over uh, over here we have some um, uh, let me see. Well, there's a there's a field for it I can't remember the name of it uh, but it uh, exaggerates the uh, the distance uh, to the uh, points so that you get an exaggeration of the uh, depth. Um, right. So the attenuation. Uh, That's the it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Very nice.
another example of the attenuation on point properties. Here's a, an example of um, the uh, tiles approach, which is not part of the uh, version four specs. Uh, and here I've got a 3D grid. And each one of those is a tile. And something in the um, tile specifications uh, uh, it, part of it is about frustum culling, which means that you uh, cull to the uh, viewpoints, whatever the viewpoint can see, you would show what's inside of there, and what it can't see, you wouldn't show. And I have a little way to, uh, to freeze a computational frustum. Uh, so that I can uh, do some uh, various debugging. Uh, you can kind of see what it calls given that frustum. It's no longer a 3D grid. It's just showing the things that the tiles that overlapped the frustum. Now that I'm, I'm wise on how to share in Zoom, I can do a kind of a live presentation of this uh, tiles scene. And I'm doing uh, my post panning and zooming as I zoom out. It starts to drop the trees. And if I do my little trick where I freeze the uh, frustum, and then I back out, you can kind of see it's been culling the tiles that are out of range of the uh, viewer frustum. And this uh, culling and the um, level of detail uh, uh, approach to um, uh, uh, rendering uh, allows you to show a very large uh, a 3D scenes uh, without um, overloading your computer. And I, without, uh, with geo, geospatial scenes, you can get uh, so much data that it's, um, would slow down your computer if you had it all loaded in memory at once. And with these tiles, as I, um, as I cull, I unload the tile. Uh, so that reduces the, uh, the amount of memory and it's uh, just uh, loading what it uh, needs to in order to view. And the same way with the uh, with the tiles, uh, unlike our uh, level of detail node and geo LOD, this um, has an, uh, a, a, a 
a way you can specify whether to replace or to add to a tile. So uh, in this case, it adds the trees to some blank tiles. Uh, so it's not replacing the whole data set, adds to it. I'll go back to this HNM and one thing uh, that I found when working on this is that it's uh, the, um, the animation data can take up a lot of room in memory and if you have uh, several models that you are animating with uh, similar animation clips, it's helpful if you only have one copy of the animation data and you can apply it to multiple models and that's what I'm doing here. And this is extra to the specifications as written. In this case I'm doing a what's called a deaf use of a uh, motion clip between two separate HNM models. And we have the uh, PBR, the physics-based rendering working. Uh, FreeWRL has uh, a way to uh, do multi-touch emulation and this is a new multi-touch sensor node uh, that uh, is in, I think it's going to be in version 4. Sorry, Doug, you were a little quick on the draw again. Could you put the multi-touch back up?
in this particular version, this is a variant. I've uh, done some more experiments with uh, the multi-touch sensor. And this particular variant is using least squares to solve for a single isotropic scale. The specification, I believe, would have uh, an isotropic scale. Uh, and I have something else to compute that. I don't have it configured uh, right now at this moment. So this is a multi-touch effect. Multi, uh, a single scale effect. I call this the drag cascade. And I believe I have another model for multi-touch. All right, a puzzle scene. And the idea is to drag the uh, pieces around until you solve the uh, puzzle. But I found that it was too hard for me. <laughs> it could be fun, but too hard. I think a two by two would be about my uh, capability. Uh, here's one more um, free WRL uh, extra, and that is that we have a geo planet that allows us to have uh, more than one planet in the scene, uh, both of them being geo planets. And we do a not bad job of uh, walking on the planets as well.
that is all the uh, free WRL extra stuff that I can show. Uh, it's a, uh, 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 it's an interesting ride. It's a privilege to work with the uh, Web3D consortium and get to try out some of the fascinating things and hang out with some uh, smart guys that are doing some, uh, some great things. So I've enjoyed the ride. Uh, hope to stay around. Uh,